the scene and then mm. uh, the last thing I want is a sort of conversation in my head. So, um, but yes, a director has to be involved in the writing, whether it's to be objective, whether it's subjective, you have to own the film. At some mm. point in time, you have to sort of like, you have to bleed for this film. You have to sort of like drop some blood and some skin and some spit and, um, and you only do that if you're very, very invested in the film and that investment only comes when you're a part of the actual creative process, which is the writing process. Correct. So whether it's, whether it's whether you're a helicopter or whether you're the actual driver of the car or whatever, but there needs to be some skin in the game in the writing process. And I think, and, and it's, it's very fluid. I don't think there's any rules um, for that. Right. But, that's, but that's my personal thing. And I know I mean, Raj and DK are both writers. You know, who I mean, Raj and DK are both writers who became filmmakers from being engineers first. Anubhav Sinha became a filmmaker from being an engineer first. Anand El Rai became a filmmaker, being an engineer first. You're the only exception here. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, what's up? Like, what is the connection between engineering and filmmaking, really? Well, and this I is the I one time. Like, been an engineer. My you could have been an engineer. Yeah, yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> we, need, we need to rag him now. We need to rag him. <laughs> he looks You're like a an engineer. You're a pacha. What is, I mean, I know one thing that's common. Uh, one thing that's common, at least I can say for this particular panel, is that there are no women in engineering class. And <laughs> there are not that many female directors. There really aren't. Even, if, that hasn't changed in all these years, has it? In terms of the representation of women in, in, among directors at least? Or at least, or in the crew, they may have? It has, mar it has marginally increased. Okay. And, uh, which is a good sign. Hmm. And I uh, hope to get better. I think the number of women directors has, I mean, compared to when we were like starting up in the beginning, I mm. think definitely there's been a larger, there's been, an, there's been, a, there's been an increase in, in, in women directors. I've also, in my experience from, from, say from my first film to the last thing I've made, um, the number of HODs on my crew who are actually female have grown pretty mm. exponentially. In the beginning, um, so Jubilee or uh, even the last film I've done, Control, uh, my production uh, production designer, my editor, uh, costume designer, um, my first AD, all women, uh, and it's not it's not um, it's not a quota thing. It's just like because. But I'm I'm just I'm just wondering. Also, it doesn't even need to be just female. I mean, it could be any gender. It could be caste. It could be religion. When you are recruiting, is that something that you have in mind? That diversity in your crew is that something that you even think of? Or making a film is hard enough. That's not the area. That's not. That's not your top concern or your concern at all because it's hard enough to put this up on the screen. I do actually, but I cannot uh, explain how I formulate it. Hmm. But I make a conscious of it. very conscious effort, instructions to the people recruiting their teams. Uh, so yeah, there is an interesting representation of everyone, but it's not uh, very neat to. Sure. Uh, elaborate how. Right, right. Answer? No, m for me, it is never. Mata, I love my industry for one reason that it never comes to your mind. Hmm. Caste, uh, gender, anything. It's, it's, it's purely talent and how much uh, um, uh, HOD or, or a technician g can give to your film. That's important, more than the gender and the caste. Oh, yeah. Uh, <coughs> no, I mean, uh, speaking of diversity, I, I think the way I understand the question is do we look for diversity or does it, do you let it naturally happen, right? Mm -hmm. See, I think uh, for us at least, uh, when we write characters, when we write our stories, we actually look for diversity in it, right? We want to create strong female characters or if, depending on the, on the story itself, have diversity in the, in the kind of regions uh, represented, represented as well, not just in the gender. So we look for diversity when we write that automatically leads to diversity in casting. Beyond mm. that, I think uh, when you, now when you go to hire the technical crew, I think most of us, we tend to pick the people that suits the project best. So b beyond that, at this point, see if you're looking for a DOP, it's, it's just the reality that probably one in 10 is a, is a woman and there's probably, they're outnumbered nine, nine is to one mm. in that sense. But when it comes to production designers, there are more women. When it comes to costume designers, there are probably way more women than men. So maybe editors also, right? Way more editors who are female. Um, yeah, yeah. So certain jobs, uh, but but yeah, it's it's a matter of that catching up. And I mm. think yeah, in that case, we would probably look to get whoever is best suited for this kind of a film. But when it comes to writing, we are very very conscious to have a a right female writer on our team. And of course, our writing room is full of a lot of uh, young women so that we get the perspective of the women also, mm. so it doesn't become like a, if I may use the word, a sausage fest, right? <laughs> no, you don't can't thing. use that word anymore. No, I can't. 
There's one more. Th enough, no. There's one more thing that I have started doing yes. past few years. You know, when we wrote scripts earlier, all your important characters would be upper caste. Hmm. Your heroes would be upper caste. Your character actors would be upper caste. So now I. Uh, Sometimes it is inconsequential which caste they come from. Hmm. But uh, you just give it a last name. But I make sure that it is so just a surname which may be said thrice in the film or maybe hmm. five times in the film. But uh, I tell all my co-writers or writers to uh, to be mindful of that. I mean, since we're talking about how things used to be back in the day, uh, all of you have been in films for longer than at least twenty years. Right, and I'm just wondering if you decided to become directors now, how different would that world have been? How, would you have started out the same way, Vikram? I guess you could have. You would have still been Sanjay Leela Bansali, still making the same kind of movies, uh, so you could have been part of it. I, I think what's changed though is, um, and um, all of us, I think, got our break by making an indie movie, mm. um, and that's where we sort of started off. That world has changed. I don't think the indie film in the theater exists as it mm. was 10, 15 years ago. Um, so the question here is that where would we get our break today? How, mm. would, how would the world see our work? Um, in the series world, would it be a situation where you've gone and created something? Are you a director for and for episodic content? Um, if you do make a film, where does that film get seen? Where does it get, uh, or do you then sort of assist someone and then end up becoming a bit of a shadow of them, of that, that mm. same? person. Um, it's not that when I was, when I became a filmmaker, it wasn't that that wasn't there. Yes, and, and in that moment, in fact, it was everybody's like, oh, you should do a rom-com. That's the best way to get a film made because you'll get a star and you'll get a producer. Um, you stick to your guns because there was still an option to say in the turn of by 2010 that, okay, there's theaters out there that are willing to take a movie like, uh, or a UTV is willing to distribute an Uran to be able to sort of mm -hmm. like take it to the movies. And that's the same case for me, for anyone here, for Anurag, for Debakar, for, you know, but I'm just wondering today, and this is the question, it's not even, I just feel today mm. that that opportunity, um, you have to say, okay, who are the new directors that I've seen today that are exciting? Um, that number has come down tremendously. Mm. Um, the exciting directors are not, their films are not being seen. So whether it's a Karan Gore who's made Fairy Folk, or whether it's a Natesh Hegde who's made Pedro, they're phenomenal directors, but their work's not being seen. So how does one, so either you're, like Raj and DK, who are uh, producing something um, uh, um, for a director who, to go out there and, and sort of like do that. Or I do a series where then a certain amount of directors come and work with mm. you. But where else would you end up seeing that? So I think that's the difference for me from 15 years ago to right now is again, is opportunity. Right. And so, I mean, you started with television, if I'm not right. mistaken. And, and if you were starting out in 2024, what, where would you? No, Mayank, I don't think anything would have changed. Uh, maybe uh, being a student of cinema, you understand the present generation or the present audience. Hmm. Uh, I, I remember when I saw Uran then, uh, it was mind blowing. I attended his success party also. And, uh, and today also, if somebody comes and makes something like Uran, I think it will work. I'll see it on, uh, on our OTT platform. It's, it's hmm. you get your appreciation. The point is that uh, we were talking about the directors. Yes. M my thing is that uh, uh, talent will never go uh, uh, unnoticed. That's, that's what I feel. Sure. You know, so for me it is. This is, this is more for the young people I saw in the audience. And I, we sort of know your journey. Um, if you were to take that same call right now, as, as they would be, where would they start from? So like. Uran was which? Uran was 2010, if I'm not mistaken. 2010. And in 2018, there was Newton. Right. Again, again a very gutsy film, and, and it, hmm. it did its business. So my point is not uh, about coming to theaters or coming on OTT. I'm talking about the talent. I think uh, that's very important to nurture what he said, hmm. giving chance to new directors and the talent. So, Anuva, would you agree? No. Uh, I think if, if, I don't know about, can't speak about the rest of them, hmm. but I think if, if people from that generation that we come from, if they started today, they will be more pliable directors. Hmm. More pliable directors. Because when we started, 
So I was remembering my first film, Tumbil. Hmm. So some people thought that the first half was slow, some people thought the second half was slow. But I was never thrown choices at me. People came and saw the film and they said whatever I had, they had to say. And then I was in the middle of the ocean trying to figure this response. I'm talking about pre-release. Right. And then I did whatever I had to do. Then it became successful. And then it happened to me several times. So during those days, the call rested with the director. And it still does to an extent. Uh, at least there's a pretense for, for it. But uh, so we have climbed those mountains on our own. Mm. So we have the confidence that, no, this is right. We, we trust our instincts more than we trust the data that's thrown at you day in and day out. Some meaningless data. Test screenings and stuff We're like testing, that. Testing, then people, and you know, now the distributor also knows about the pacing of a film, and uh, everybody knows everything about the film. But that's not the case. Nobody knows anything about the film. Such a young art. We, it's still developing. And I think the flight of the director is terribly curtailed today. And it is like the American... Today Demo as against in the past, you're saying. Yes, yes. This is the worst time to be a director yeah, well, than... Of course. Wow. When we worked with those independent producers, they would have this gut feeling about you. It is like the House of Medici or... <laughs> yeah, they say... Can